My name is Annika Shankoy. I'm a senior lecturer at Uppsala University, and I have the pleasure to moderate this session together with my fellow ESDR board member, Professor Julian Seneschal from Bordeaux. Uh, this uh, ESDR Kitchen episode belongs to the series, The Recipe Book, where we can hear about different methods that can be used in dermatology research, because to make a good meal, we need a good recipe, right? And with that, I would like to give the word uh, to Professor Julien Seneschal, who will introduce our speaker today. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Iniko. Uh, good uh, afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure uh, today to receive uh, Professor uh, Emilis Didion, uh, Professor in Therapeutic. Uh, she is also a dermatologist in the Department of Dermatology in Henri Mondor University Hospital, Créteil, in France. And she's head of uh, pharmacoepidemiological research team called Epiderm. Her uh, research interest is dedicated to benefic, benefic and risk balance of treatments uh, used for psoriasis. She's a member of the French Psoriasis Study Group. And uh, she has a, an excellent track record with many papers related to epidemiology systemic reviews and meta-analysis in high impact factor journals. And the title of our talk today is Building a Network Meta-Analysis. Please, Emily. Thank you. Thank you very much for your introduction. And thank you uh, very much to give me the opportunity uh, to, uh, to discuss the, the added value of um, uh, network meta-analysis for dermatologists. So um, the, uh, this lecture will be divided in two parts. Uh, during the first one, we will uh, discuss why and when building a network meta-analysis. And uh, in the second part, we will go, uh, go through some definitions and uh, methodological points to ensure uh, 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 um, the validity and the quality of the network meta-analysis. So um, the levels of uh, evidence is uh, a system uh, used to rank uh, medical studies uh, based on their quality and their reliability. Uh, these levels of uh, evidence uh, are depicted uh, uh, in a pyramid model and uh, the um, higher the position is uh, on the pyramid, uh, the stronger the evidence uh, is. At the top of the pyramid, you could see systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And this meta-analysis allows allow to improve uh, statistic power, to, for, uh, to perform subgroup uh, analysis when data are available, and often uh, also to highlight the unmet uh, medical needs. Taking psoriasis as an example, uh, you can see that uh, there, there, there are an increased number of randomized controlled trials uh, over time from uh, 15 uh, in the 17 to 200 in the 2020. So uh, this is impossible for dermatologists, uh, even experts in the field, to synthesize uh, this information. That's why meta-analyses uh, are uh, very useful. And uh, Schmidt and collaborators published for the first time in 2008, the first classical meta-analysis for psoriasis. They uh, selected and uh, included all uh, the trials assessing uh, interventions uh, for psoriasis, both uh, non-biological interventions uh, as methotrexate, cyclosporine, but also um, the, the first uh, biological treatments as infleximab or adalimumab. They identified uh, 55 references and uh, uh, 16 uh, trials were included in the uh, meta-analysis. You can see uh, a forest plot uh, on the, the right side uh, of the slide. And uh, taking this example, uh, the comparison infleximab versus placebo, you can see that they identify three different trials uh, the square uh, is a side effect. For example, patients receiving infleximab were four times more likely to reach PASI 75 compared with placebo. 
And the line is the 95% confidence interval. So uh, at least the diamond uh, is the result of the meta-analysis. And this meta-analysis was possible because the population uh, share uh, common uh, criteria. Uh, the uh, interventions was, was uh, similar uh, within trials as well as the outcomes. However, uh, the uh, uh, main limits of classical meta-analysis is that ranking different drugs is not allowed without available direct comparisons. So what is a network meta-analysis? This is a, a, a method that allows uh, the, the comparison of multiple intervention in a single uh, analysis using both direct and indirect evidence. Direct evidence uh, are data uh, extracted from uh, randomized trials that uh, compare directly to uh, different interventions. For example, infleximab versus placebo or secukinumab versus placebo. Indirect evidence uh, are mathematically uh, deduced uh, uh, when uh, two or, or more interventions share a common comparator and for example, we could uh, uh, assess, compare infleximab and secukinumab because they share placebo as a common comparator. So a network meta-analysis allows uh, to, to determine the measure of the relative effects between two interventions, even if these uh, interventions have never been uh, compared directly in a trial. Uh, one uh, of other advantages of uh, network meta-analysis is uh, that it could provide a ranking of including interventions. Uh, so it is very useful for uh, comparative effectiveness uh, research. However, to provide uh, uh, robust results, uh, authors uh, must follow methodological assumptions and considerations. We've just seen that uh, the, uh, the number, the increased number uh, of trials over time uh, make useful the use of uh, classical meta-analysis for psoriasis. Uh, the increased number of interventions uh, uh, for psoriasis make also useful uh, the use of network meta-analysis uh, for, for psoriasis. So how building a network meta-analysis it is important to remember that network meta-analysis come after a systematic review and a classical, uh, uh, meta, uh, a classical sorry, meta-analysis. And to do so, uh, you must follow some rules, uh, such as registration of a protocol prior to the conduct uh, of the study, including the research question. This is a precise research question. Is treatment, uh, treatment A, uh, efficient for uh, this disease uh, and you, you, you must clearly define the inclusion criteria, including the population, the target population, the intervention, the comparators and the outcomes. Then you perform your systematic review, you assess risk of bias for all the included studies and provide comprehensive and transparent pr presentations of the results. These elements are essential when, you, uh, when preparing a network meta-analysis and when performing it. And this will impact uh, the confidence in uh, the result. To help uh, the author uh, to conduct uh, such a method, you, you could um, uh, consult uh, two different checklists, uh, Prisma checklist for a good reporting of systematic review uh, and uh, meta-analysis, and AMSTAR 2, uh, 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 which help uh, you to assess the, the quality of uh, the meta-analysis. So uh, let's move to uh, key uh, network meta-analysis assumptions. Uh, so um, one, uh, one assumption uh, that it absolutely necessary uh, to, uh, to ensure is a transitivity assumption. Uh, transitivity assumption uh, is uh, the assumption under which it is uh, valid to combine both direct 
and uh, indirect evidence. And uh, to do uh, so, uh, it is necessary that direct uh, evidence are similar in the distribution of uh, the effect modifiers. So several methods uh, exist. And for uh, example, um, the authors have to choose inclusion criteria that, that make this assumption plausible. They could also, uh, if data are available, compare the distribution of the effect modifier. This example is the mean age of participants for the network meta-analysis uh, Cochrane for psoriasis. So mean age for each comparison. And you can see that this, this, the, the distribution uh, of the, the, the mean age of participants is, is similar uh, within trials. Another assumption is a coherence uh, assumption defined as the agreement between direct and indirect evidence. And it could be assessed both locally and globally using, for example, the loop specific approach. So uh, you, you have the, the different uh, uh, loop, placebo, methotrexate, adalimumab, for example, and you will compare the differences between your direct and your uh, indi uh, indirect evidence. Another uh, uh, assumption, a uh, very important one, is the heterogeneity. Heterogeneity is uh, defined as the underlying differences between uh, the studies that uh, compare uh, the, the, the same um, pair of uh, interventions. Um, so this heterogeneity uh, uh, can be uh, clinical, methodological, or uh, statistical, and authors must uh, assess uh, uh, both um, uh, heterogeneity uh, within trials that compare the same intervention using uh, the uh, I-square. This is the, uh, an example, a classical uh, meta-analysis, you remember the square, the diamond for the uh, uh, net uh, for the meta-analysis, sorry, and you uh, calculate the I square. Uh, in this example, this is equal uh, at zero, so no heterogeneity. So uh, this I square is uh, only um, used for trials that uh, compare the, the same interventions. You need to assess your heterogeneity in the entire uh, network using uh, estimated heterogeneity standard deviation parameters. And uh, this parameter, you, uh, you could find it uh, looking uh, at such table uh, called a leak table. The toe is uh, uh, null and there, there is no heterogeneity. In case uh, of heterogeneity, uh, the authors could uh, provide uh, the prediction intervals and this uh, prediction uh, uh, interval will assess how much the estimated heterogeneity affects the relative effect. This is uh, the result of, uh, this is a, a forest plot. You have the diamond, this is a, a, a size effect. The line for the uh, 90, the dark line for the 95% confidence interval and the red one for the prediction interval. And in some case, it could change a result from significant result to a, a non-significant result. So this is a, a very uh, important uh, result uh, to, to look at. So uh, in uh, uh, high uh, or significant heterogeneity, as well as high uh, uh, or significant incoherence, uh, will undermine uh, the conclusion drawn uh, from your network meta-analysis, and so uh, in case of uh, um, any heterogeneity, any incoherence must be addressed and explored using subgroup analysis and meta regression when, when uh, it is possible. So uh, let's move to presentation of uh, the results. Uh, it's a, a challenging part of the network meta analysis because you have to, to, to provide a, a clearly understood uh, results and uh, also presentation accessible for, for uh, readers. And uh, it could be difficult when the, the, when, uh, the network is uh, quite large. 
So um, there are a lot of uh, way to, uh, to present the result and the authors could uh, um, present the result using a forest plot. Um, this forest plot will uh, show the estimated relative treatment effect uh, compared to uh, 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 common comparators. For example, patients receiving anti-IL-17 uh, treatments were 30 times more likely to reach uh, PASI-19 compared with patients uh, under placebo. However, this forest plot um, uh, does not compare two by two uh, uh, treatments. And so you have to look at the leak table. Uh, th th this uh, this uh, table uh, is the, the most important result of the network. So uh, you have uh, the, the lower triangle for, the, uh, uh, for an efficacy outcome, in this case, PASI-90, and the upper triangle for a safety outcome, serious adverse events. And uh, how could you uh, read that? Patients receiving anti-IL-17 treatment were uh, two times more likely to reach PASI-19 compared with patients receiving uh, a TNF inhibitors. Uh, one, uh, uh, another presentation is the possibility to provide a coherent uh, ranking of treatment. And um, the, the most popular metric uh, is the SUCRA for surface under the cumulative ranking curve. This is a probability uh, for an intervention to be the lowest or the highest one from zero to 100. However, uh, same uh, limit uh, we, we've just seen for the forest plot, uh, this sucra, uh, um, with the sucra, you, 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 you don't have result for two by two uh, comparisons. You, you need uh, to, uh, to go to, uh, to the leak table results. So uh, uh, presentations of, uh, you, uh, of the results, um, uh, when, uh, when you present your results, you could follow uh, the Prisma extension statement for, for reporting uh, of systematic reviews, incorporating network meta-analysis of healthcare interventions. And uh, it uh, includes a network graph, assessment of uh, risk of bias for each included studies, result for each included studies and a synthesis of uh, the results. At the end of your network uh, meta-analysis, you have to grade uh, the certainty of evidence. You have to grade the certainty of evidence of your results to a possibility to approach the grade one and the cinema one and both uh, are based on several domains within study bias, reporting bias, indirectness, imprecisions, heterogeneity, and incoherence. So we already uh, uh, saw uh, different domains, but uh, using this domain, we will, for each comparison, assess uh, the result as a high, moderate, low, or very low level of certainty uh, uh, of evidence. Uh, let's focus on uh, uh, two, uh, two uh, other domains, the indirectness. It describes the extent to which the available evidence in the network meta-analysis can be directly used to answer uh, the research question. Are our evidence relevant for the target populations? Did we choose the right intervention, the right outcome measure? We, we, we've just seen the incoherence in the, so the disagreement between direct and indirect evidence, and this incoherence must be assessed for each pairwise comparison. And so in case of sufficient dissimilarity or uncertainty uh, about indirectness, authors should write down the certainty of evidence. And uh, uh, this table, uh, uh, sum up all the results of the network meta-analysis for psoriasis. You have all the interventions here. Uh, you have the two main uh, outcomes, 
In the lower triangles, uh, the efficacy outcome with the PAZ90. In the upper one, the serious adverse uh, uh, events. And you have the result for, the, uh, for all uh, comparison two by two. Once again, patient receiving infliximab, where I don't know, uh, yes, three times more likely to reach PAZ90 compared with patients receiving adalimumab, okay? And uh, there is also a, a, a color code. Uh, this color code is related to the certainty of evidence. In uh, green, a high certainty of evidence of the results. Uh, uh, in blue, a moderate uh, certainty of evidence. And the yellow one is a low certainty of evidence. You could see that the yellow one is related to cyclosporine or methotrexate. Um, they, they, they are um, the oldest interventions for psoriasis with less trial, with um, less uh, uh, conducted trial. Uh, and uh, so uh, it leads to imprecisions or to uh, risk of bias uh, for uh, this trial. That's why uh, the certainty of evidence was uh, low for, for these interventions. So uh, to uh, get more details uh, on uh, network meta-analysis, uh, you uh, could uh, 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 consult um, online guidance. This is available on the Cochrane uh, website and uh, uh, it provides clear uh, explanations on the different steps of the systematic review and classical and network uh, meta-analysis with all the references uh, you need. So uh, maybe some take home messages. Uh, network meta-analysis is very useful in, in comparative effectiveness uh, research. There is no uh, one result, but several results. And as reader, you have to pay attention to uh, uh, the inclusion criteria, including the target populations, the interventions and their comparators, and of course the outcomes. And you have to check if um, inconsistency, heterogeneity, and level of certainty of evidence were uh, assessed, uh, because it will end the transparency, the reproductibility, and the credibility of the result of uh, the, the NMR. Uh, so thank you uh, very much for your attention, and uh, uh, thank you also to Laurence Lecléage, Sylvain Afash, and uh, Robin Guillini. Um, that are involved in uh, the, the team uh, NMA for psoriasis. Uh, thank you again. Thank you very much for this nice presentation. Uh, with this, I would also like to encourage the audience to send questions through the chat or through the Q&A. Um, but until you send your questions, I can start a little bit of discussion. It's, it's very interesting and definitely very, very relevant for clinicians. Um, and I think that uh, the number of network meta-analyses have really grown uh, during the past years. So do you have some very simple advice to give to clinicians who try to orient in this, in this jungle? It, it's, it can be pretty difficult. <laughs> Uh, so, because you can see sometimes also contradicting results or conflicting results from different NMA analysis. So how should we know what to believe and what is mo most correct? Is there a good way for it? Yes, I, I think that uh, the number of uh, meta-analyses and network meta-analyses is higher right now uh, compared with the number of trials uh, last year, I think. So yes, it's a very uh, a, a big issue. Um, and I, I think really you have to, to check for, for uh, the, the key assumptions, so heterogeneity and incoherence, and uh, uh, also uh, to be sure that um, uh, the, 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 there was a, a protocol, a, re a registered protocol with a precise research questions uh, and a, a good methodology. And uh, yes, this is uh, the, the really key points uh, for, uh, for the readers. Thank you. Um, yeah, 
That's why I only trust the one published by your group, probably, but uh, <laughs> it's probably a bias in my opinion, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, just um, uh, before to, to get to the question, because I have also a question, that, because actually you compare different um, trials made with different um, outcomes and different standards when you compare uh, infle infleximal results from clinical trials, it was not the same standard compared to the uh, anti-IL-23. And um, so, for example, uh, it's a, uh, the, the example you show about the the, the, the chance to reach PASI-90, for example, I, I'm not sure it was reported in the first clinical trial with infleximab because it was not the standard at this time. But how do you handle with that? Do you predict or do you... No, no. no. Uh, you, you, um, the, maybe the main outcome of the trial was not PASI-90. Of course, you're totally right. But the PASI-90 was assessed. Okay. We, 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 um, the, the results are extracted from, from the trials and not predict. Okay. Okay. And uh, so uh, for infleximab, PASI-90 was available in their trials, of course. Okay. And uh, yes, the, the inclusion criteria for the population was uh, uh, quite similar. It was moderate to severe psoriasis, maybe. Uh, what uh, it changed over time is the non-inclusion criteria with a, a, a more and more selected population. Uh, and of course, uh, patients receiving right now, uh, I don't know, uh, IL-23 inhibitors uh, already receive uh, uh, biological uh, lines and it was less the case with infleximab. Uh, less uh, biological uh, lines before uh, the so yes qu quite change but the same uh, severity of the disease so we, we don't uh, we don't have uh, so much uh, uh, heterogeneity we don't have heterogeneity as a network in the network and we don't have any problem with the transitivity so mm. Well, we have a question in the Q&A, which is a bit related to what I asked you before. So is, are there any validated tools to assess the quality of the NMA that can help us critically reading NMA publications? Yes. Uh, so for the quality is the ANSTAR, A-M-S-T-R uh, 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 2 uh, um, checklist. And for the reporting, uh, such as consult for trials, this is the PRISMA checklist. But for the quality, it's Amstar. You could uh, use this, uh, uh, this tool, yes. Maybe you can allow me a question also about the... I was thinking uh, there are always different numbers of trials included uh, in, in these NMAs, and some have a limited number of clinical trials included, while others have a very large number of trials. How does this affect the results of the analysis? Can you get different results, for example, if you compare two treatments, depending on how many trials you include? I guess, yes, but what, what, what can you trust more? Uh, so this is a, a very important question, and uh, we are working with a PhD uh, on, on this point. Uh, that is to say, when an extra trial uh, will not change the results uh, for uh, one intervention. So. I don't have for psoriasis or the, the answer yet, but we are working on it. Um, it it's uh, very important uh, to, uh, to have uh, several uh, trials uh, comparing the same uh, interventions. Uh, only one is, is not enough, uh, but I don't know if after 10 uh, trials uh, comparing the same uh, uh, the, the same uh, intervention, it's, it's still needed, but we, uh, we will give you the, the correct answer uh, in a few months. Ah, thank you. Looking forward to it. Um, just um, uh, another question, but just practically, um, how, how, how many times you need to do that? And uh, do you do by yourself or do you need a uh, an army of PhD students or biostatistician no. to do that? Or? 
we are uh, five uh, person involved in the really involved in the network. Uh, uh, now it's a living network, so it's a, a, a kind of um, yes continue update. Uh, but for the first time, I don't know. It's maybe six months uh, full time work. Mm. Okay, great. Mm. I wonder a little bit because these these results have potentially a, a very high relevance, of course, for the for the clinical decisions. So when when making the national guidelines, for example, mm. sh should these be taken into account, or should yeah. should they more rely on head to head studies? Um, um, what do you think? We are working with that. Alexander Nast, uh, uh, who, who was in charge uh, of the European guidelines for psoriasis, and uh, he used our results, and we share the, the results with, with uh, his group. And um, uh, our next step uh, will, will be uh, uh, more clinically relevant because uh, we are uh, uh, waiting for the IPD uh, trial. So the individual patient data for all the trial, including in the network. So we could, we, we will uh, perform, we would perform uh, uh, this network uh, depending of the characteristic of the patient. So subgroup uh, uh, network meta-analysis and uh, it will be uh, uh, more relevant in a daily practice. Thank you very much for the last questions from the audience. So how the constitution of the network can affect the results of the comparison between different network meta-analysis? For example, if you include different interventions in your overlap, something like that. You can probably read also the... Yes, I'm reading it, uh, the constitution of the network and the comparison. Uh, it's uh, yes, of course, if you don't put in the network uh, the same intervention, it's difficult to uh, uh, to uh, to expect the same result. So uh, it's it's difficult to 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 answer uh, to that question. Uh, you, you could compare different network meta-analyses if they share the same intervention. If not, it, it's quite complicated. But I'm not sure that I answer to, to this question. Okay, that, um, thank you very much, Amy. It was very clear because it's a really difficult uh, uh, field, of course, and it was very clear for us uh, uh, as a dermatologist and uh, how to, to better understand uh, this, uh, this work. Um, thanks again. Now, um, thanks for your attention and uh, to be with us. And now it's a summer break. So I'll see you in August for the next episode. And uh, you can see uh, all uh, uh, the ESDR webinar on the YouTube channel of the ESDR. Thank you very much and remind you the late breaking abstract for the ESDR meeting deadline August uh, 30. Thank you very much. Bye bye.